I'm not sure how many of you folks have uh, been familiarized with the uh, Miyazi Drum Company, but it's a great company from yesteryear, and they made the first, I guess, electronic drums. They were basically acoustic drums with a really high-tech microphones installed inside of them, and they had a, a brain on the side here that would just uh, sort of a, a mixer, and they, then they came with this uh, amplifier. And Max Roach uh, used their drums in the late 60s, and so did uh, Billy Cobham, Art Blakey, Dijonette. A lot of different guys used them on and off. They never got real popular. But today I've got a, a hi-hat stand that is uh, broken. It's um, pot metal and these tended to break. So I'm going to attempt to try to patchwork this thing back together. And I thought I'd bring you guys along for the ride. Let's uh, get right into it. Okay, these hi-hat stands, um, this is a, a picture of one, and this is this exact model that I have here, and you'll see these external springs, here's one of them, right here, and there's like two of them going up and down here, and there's an exter uh, external, your hi-hat rod goes on the outside here and goes down here. It's in the tube. It's sort of like the old Slinger lens, uh, the flat base ones, where the bottom of the, the inner pull rod actually is exposed down here at the bottom here. Anyway, what notoriously happens with these is uh, they made this section here out of pot metal, and it breaks right here. I've got a, another one right here. This is the one I want to repair. These are really great little hi-hat stands. But, um, you know, I mean, it's, it's the pedal. This company was really ahead of their time in so many ways. Uh, they're the ones who, well, sort of developed the timpani tom. Um, timpani floor tom it was ahead of the uh, ahead of Yamaha but actually WFL built one of those back in the 30s so I can't say that they developed it and of course timpani drums have been around for a long time but um, not the first ones were pedal timpanis they were tuned by hand anyway this part here is good. So what I'm thinking is I really need to try to uh, maybe attach this one I, I, onto this one here. Uh, this one's too cracked up. Look at they they broke this here and put a little piece of metal here. Oh, there's Ethel. She's waking up now. Well, she's getting big. She's over 100 pounds now. Look at there's my foot. She's pretty big. Oh, yeah, Phil. Yeah. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this apart a little more, wait for Ethel to go by, and um, we'll get into this. This might be a lesson in futility. I'm not so sure it's even going to work. But um, as you can see, oh, let me let me get the stand here. I can't. Yeah, this might be a lesson in futility. But uh, <laughs> what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to 
As you can see, this ear here is broken off of this part here. Let's see, this went, let's see, this one went like, um, this went like this. No, it didn't. It went like this. So, so then the pedal would go in here. You know, you'd have your, your pedal and it would squeeze, kind of like a Gretsch floating action. You'd have this to where it would squeeze in there. And of course, all this casting broke apart. So you can't weld pot metal. That doesn't work. So I don't know. Your, your options are limited. But I do happen to have the whole section of this other stand over here to my right that has this and it's in the proper shape. So if I could somehow attach this and have the legs hold it and then figure out a way to, I don't know, liquid metal, something in there. I know it's not going to be right, but this is such a good stand. I hate to see it go by the wayside. Uh, it's really lightweight and just a really good pedal. I used to have a, a few uh, a few of these drum sets. I've sold them since. I mean, I I, I'm, I just have too many drums, so I, I had to thin out the herd some years ago, and um, I had some beautiful Miyazi sets and a few snares too. But I just don't. Um, I didn't use them. They were just sitting around as muse museum pieces. So I thought, well can't have these. So this is really the last of this stuff and I want to um, you know maybe use this pedal. So I'm going to pop these rivets out of here and maybe see if I what I can do to get this to mount the two legs and uh, <laughs> we'll see what happens here. Okay I've got a, a little anvil here and I'm going to try to Pop the rivets on. Um, let's see, I'm going to pop them on this particular one here. So I'm going to put that down in the uh, oh boy, there's, this is impossible. Okay, that'll work. I'm just going to try to Tap this rivet out of here. This pin is, is really what it is. It's a pin. So that tapped out of there quite nicely. And there it is. And so that leg is off of there. And what I might do is I might remove all of these. Just so I can work on this without having everything flopping around around here. Worst thing that can happen is I, I lose uh, this part here, I guess, which would pretty much be the end of this project. There it is. There's that pin. You can see it's got splines around the. Uh, around the, the edge of it on one side to lock it in there. So Yeah, this one's got splines. I need something I can put down that uh, I'll get this punch here that's quite long and I'll be able to push that pin all the way through. There we go. Got that. Now I've got this thing free here. 
and what I'll do is I'll clean it and I'm gonna see what I can do as far as trying to adapt this on here I'll have to cut this part off nothing lost here because it's all broken anyway whoops uh, so I've, I've uh, removed that that part there that was um, attached here I ground it off I actually cut it and here's the part here that would have to get somehow mounted to it and what I'm going to probably do here is I'm going to put the legs back on here and see just what I need to shave off of here and my crazy idea here is I don't know if it's going to work it's kind of kind of a far-fetched thing but there's actually enough here to where I could probably tap this and put a screw now this is broken here and this is the upside but nothing saying I can't turn it over and mount it like this I mean it, it won't be exactly right but it doesn't well it has to be straight across these have these have to be parallel so let's see but that part's broken off like like I say this is kind of a crazy idea but I really want to save this pedal <clears throat> So let me go ahead and mount those legs on there again, and let, let's see where we're at. Okay, so um, what we're up against here is we've got to be able to remove this part from here. And it came off the other one, so we know that that's a possibility. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put you guys back here, because I need a little bit of room here. And I'll just zoom you in a little, so you can see the process. All right. There we are. What I do is I take a uh, a spanner, as they would call it in England, or a crescent wrench, as we call it here, and I make it the exact distance as, as this pipe is. I just close it up a little bit. I'm just going to tap on it with my mallet here and see if I can get this thing to move. Yeah, it seems to be moving and I move it around a little bit so I don't... There it is. It came right off of there. And now we can work on this one. Well, this is the junk one, so we're not worried about that. Now I want to take this tube off of here and I want to put these legs on that other one. Okay, fast forward a little bit. I've found that I cannot use these pins that go in here to hold this together. I'm going to use screws to make it look really hokey. So I've found these long screws, and I'll cut them off, of course. Uh, but uh, I thought if I put pressure between this ear and this, it would probably squish this. So I thought, I'll put a, uh, a spacer in there, and that'll help hold it nice and tight. So these little, it's a brass uh, uh, tube that I've cut off at the proper distance. So let me get that together, I'll show you. Well, believe it or not, this is actually, uh, seems to actually be working. It's, it's really solid. Um, and it, it'll fold up. So, you know, we haven't put it all together, but it folds up the way it, it should. Oh, look at these legs. This is pretty, um, the Italian genius. Uh, these uh, little stoppers on every leg, all three legs come down and stop the hi-hat stand from creeping. Or you can fold them back and just use the rubber feet on a hardwood floor or whatever you have. So I thought that was kind of ingenious. Now we'll um, continue on. I haven't even thought about what to do here. I mean, I, I don't know. Um, so as you can see, I've put in these little brass 
uh, spacers in here. And um, uh, that kept it from tightening too much. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually tighten those a little more. This is the... Uh, actually, I'm going to put a different washer on that. I don't like the way that looks. Let me put this thing a little bit more together. And... Um, let's see. Is there any way of... I was thinking maybe of... Uh, I don't know, putting some liquid metal in here, maybe to beef it up a little bit. I don't know. Look, it isn't a stand that I'm going to use. Um, uh, yeah, out on gigs, so I don't do gigs anymore. Um, so, um, I just want to be able to use it. It's just a smooth, wonderful pedal. So, uh, let me get this thing together. Check it out. I found a really good washer for this. It fits right in there, and it's a pretty decent diameter. The other one was just really wide and sloppy, and I don't think it was the original one. <laughs> so, uh, I've cleaned this, uh, this tightening screw up and oiled it, like I always do. And, um, you know... Uh, I think this thing is going to work pretty darn good. It's never going to be a museum piece, but I don't care. It's just for me. I don't have to uh, uh, see a mint one. I had a, a really mint one that went to a set. And I just learned to love it. And um, another really good uh, pedal is the, the Osba Caroline I know you probably are familiar with the Osbuck Caroline bass drum pedal, but actually there was a hi-hat stand, and maybe I'll show that to you someday. <clears throat> it's quite a quite a good hi-hat stand, really lightweight, but, you know, really great French engineering. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this stand a little bit more together, and uh, let's give it a test. Hey, this thing's working pretty good. Um... Look how smooth it is. Um, so, like I said, this this attaches just like a floating action Gretsch or Camco pedal on the base. This was the part that was broke right in here. I'm not sure if I'm going to try to... I don't think that liquid metal would help at all. Um, uh, the thing about this pedal is it's, just, it's impossible to find parts for. This, this company went defunct. I think in about 72 or 3. So it's these parts are like few and far between, even in Italy. Uh, but um, I'll just give you a demonstration of how this thing works. It's kind of like the old Promark or Collado French uh, system where you have the external springs here. Here's your, your tube here and your clutch is up here. And then, kind of like the Slingerland deal, where you remember those in the 60s, the tube actually came out of the main shaft instead of all the way through it. The tube, tube would come out and connect here. And um, then you have these adjusting springs. And so, the more spring you want, you just... I don't have the key for this, although I may. If you want less spring, you just bring that up a little bit. And uh, voila. And it's real quiet. It needs a new little, uh, you don't want to hear that. Actually, let me see if I can find one. Look at that, I found two of these little rubber washers. I've got one on there. Let me get you guys in here. Uh, so, I'll just put these rubber washers on here. And see, it had this felt deal on here, but it's all worn out. So it does very little good. And I'm going to bring the main rod through here. 
and it's like any other old hi-hat system you just connect that part there tighten it down and then um, to get your proper tension on your springs you just pull it down and I wish I had a key let me go get a yeah so I found this little clock key which is this hex or a six-sided uh, key which fits this um, screw really nice so what we're going to do is we're going to bring this rod up and then just bring these springs down and we'll just get a feel for it that feels kind of it's still kind of noisy wish I had a uh, a felt but that's a little bit better I'm not so sure I might have one you know what? I'm gonna go get I'm gonna go look and see if I can find one because that's annoying so yeah I found this uh, little felt I got this box of felts here and I dug through it and you know this is a felt that you would probably never use on anything else because it has a small diameter hole so um, I'm thinking maybe I'll just incorporate these these rubber washer thingies on here and put the felt in between to try to dampen that sound kind of drives you nuts when the hi-hat goes up um, See if that has anything to do, that helps with that uh, that sound. It's got to help. Okay, I'm just going to bring this thing up, and then I'm going to just put a little bit of tension on the spring. Maybe not as much as last time. That was, seemed like it was a little, a little much on there. And it's still, still making that sound. It has a lot to do with this pedal here. Uh, but old stuff, you know, it's. Um, No, I'm not sure if I play with my my hi-hat where it comes up all the time when I'm playing. I suppose it would. Um, let me put less tension on these springs and see if that helps. Anyway, that is what it is. Um, Kind of rattly here. Maybe I'm over analyzing it. I'm not bringing this in a studio, so what's the difference? Um, maybe this could be tightened up a little bit. I hate to tighten it and then snap off the casting. I better leave well enough alone here. I'm just going to clean this thing up, I think, and uh, see how I like it. Okay, so I've cleaned this thing up. I, I think just thought I'd give you a full view of everything on this this pedal. Of course, we've got these fold-down legs on here, which are kind of cool if you're on carpet. And this is the way the... Uh, Sorry about that. This is the way the string system works. You know, it's in pretty good shape other than that big crack, which made it absolutely useless. And so it's been kicking around all my junk. And I just thought, man, I can't. And I had the other, other one. Um, and so I was able to incorporate the two and make one. And... I've always been a fan of this Miyazi stuff, 
Look at here, it says Hollywood. You know, Hollywood. That's what they were. Uh, they were Miyazi Hollywood. And so, just really great stuff from the old days. And I just thought I'd bring you along for the ride. And hopefully, hopefully you'll like it. And um, we'll catch you later.